Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Allen and welcome to Plant Dupes. So the Philodendron Spiritus Sancti is often considered the, pretty much the holy grail of all Philodendron. Not only are these hard to come by, but they also carry a pretty hefty price tag. I have one here beside me and this cost me, I think it was about 2000 US dollars, so not cheap. This plant, of course, is on pretty much everybody's wish list, but not everybody is willing to pay the price tag. So that naturally got me thinking, well, what kind of plant are out there that are possibly dupes for this plant. Now, if you don't know what a dupe is, we actually use this term in the makeup community quite a lot. Beauty influencers normally find, say, a high-end product, say an eyeshadow or something like that, and then they will look for a lower price tagged product from, you know, an alternative company that basically does the same thing, looks kind of similar, but it's way cheaper. So I thought, can we do the same thing with plants? Now, I know, I understand, plants can't be duplicated. That's the whole point of a plant. I totally get that. So this video won't be you know, this plant is identical to this plant for obvious reasons. But what I have attempted to do is to find a list of plants that, in my opinion, have similar characteristics or are in a lot of ways reminiscent to that of a Philodendron Spiritus Sancti. I am doing this just for fun, but if anybody wants me to make a full-on series about this, then do let me know in the comments below. So without further ado, let's just get straight into what I actually managed to find. In no particular order, first up, we have the Philodendron Ecuadorian Canoe, also known as the Philodendron Jerry Home. What is it? I don't really know. Some people think this plant is a hybrid between Philodendron Bipenifolium and Philodendron Atabapoense. Others just claim this plant to be a clone of Philodendron Bipenifolium. Obviously, this plant doesn't look identical to a Philodendron Spiritus Sancti, but in my opinion, it does carry a lot of the hallmarks that we're probably looking for. It's got a really nice length on it, and it has a really, really nice big back midrib going down the center. It actually has some really decent lobes on the plant as well. I also call them ears, so the pointy parts at the top of the leaf are indeed very similar to Asperitus also. I think this plant's pretty sexy. It's not the easiest plant to find on the internet. You may struggle a little bit, but will you struggle as much as finding Asperitus online? No, probably not, which does make it a reasonable alternative. If you do want to search for this plant on the internet, it's probably a good idea to either search for Philodendron Jerry Home or Philodendron Ecuadorian Canoe. That is why I've included both names, just in case you are looking for it and you can't find the plant under one name, maybe you can find it under another name. This plant may have other names, but I'm not aware of any currently, so... Next up, we have something a little bit different, and stick with me on this one. This is the Anthurium Flavolineatum. Now I know, what on earth? Kaylee, are you thinking? But honestly, if you're not bothered about having a philodendron, then this might be a really nice anthurium alternative to that. So the flavor lineal autumn, I can't even say it, has really, really nice length. It also, for an anthurium, has some really, really nice lobes on it. So the ears on the top of the plant, it's very, very sagittate. So if you are looking for something resembling a Spiritus Sancti, maybe you just like the aspect of the longer leaves and a little bit of a pointy ear, but you're not too keen on philodendron, or you want to expand your anthurium collection, then this might be one you might want to search for on the internet. It's not too difficult to find, you can find it. Obviously, being an anthurium, this plant does lose some of the characteristics we're looking for in a Spiritus Sancti, but it does still have the length, you know, if that's what matters to you. Do try and think of this as an anthurium alternative rather than a straight up dupe. You could also try looking at the Thormatophyllum stenolobum narrow form if that's something that may interest you. Now this plant has previously been categorized as a philodendron, but now we know it to be a Thormatophyllum. So if you're going to search for this plant on the internet, it could be a cool idea to both use Thormatophyllum and philodendron and see if that comes up. You might be able to find it much easier that way. If a seller has not yet been updated on the fact that this has been reclassified, you might find it slightly easier to find it under the name philodendron stenolobum narrow form. Obviously this plant does have a regular form but being that we need to get a little bit closer to those spiritus sancti vibes I've gone with the one that is obviously more narrow. It's quite a nice plant. It's a little bit like a bilitae on steroids, I guess you could say. It does have some undulations on the side of the leaves, so, you know, like a rippled edge of the leaf, which does kind of detract it from looking like a spiritus, but it's still a good choice if you're just looking for something with a little bit of drama to it and something that can have quite a lot of leaves because I find these plants are a lot more fuller than, you know, a lot of philodendron in the way that they grow. 
Next up, and this is a really, really, really cool plant. This is the Philodendron Longilobatum Leano Miano. I think that's how you say it. I don't know. I probably butchered it. I'm really, really sorry. This plant has some of the coolest leaves I've ever seen on a Philodendron. No, it's not quite like Aspiritus, but I think we can all agree looking at this image, it is kind of similar. It does have vibes that do make you think of a Philodendron Spiritus Sancti. These leaves have no problem at all reaching about three feet in length, so that's pretty good if you're wanting something with a bit more length. To me, it reminds me of a Philodendron Spiritus Sancti crossed with a Philodendron Golden Dragon a little bit in just the way that the leaf is just all, you know, kind of all over the place. I've never seen this plant before until I started researching this video, so for me, I'd probably be quite interested in owning one of these. Like, this could be a wishlist plant for me quite easily. If you do need something, you know, a lot more closer to Asperitas, you're really going hard for that dupe, you could try the Philodendron Bernardo Pat CI narrow form. This is where we start getting much, much closer to the appearance of Aspiritus Sancti. In fact, this plant has even been said to be related to Aspiritus Sancti. In fact, it's so similar that to me personally, the only thing really missing from this in Aspiritus Sancti are the ears, the lobes on the plant. A lot of this plant looks so, so similar to the real thing. It has to be said that, of course, there is a regular form, again, as well as the narrow form, but the narrow form looks obviously a lot closer to what we're looking for. I'm pretty sure that the narrow form is not that easy to find, whereas the regular form is, so you may have some trouble looking for the narrow form. But if you find it, I honestly think this is a plant that could quite easily, you know, quench the spiritus thirst that a lot of people tend to have. I do think this is a very, very good dupe for a spiritus. Next up, something a little bit more accessible to us, but not as close looking as the previous plant we just looked at. So the next on my list is the Philodendron Bilitae crossed with Atabapuensi, also known as Bilitae Dark Form. That is this plant right here that is sitting beside me. Now, there's been a lot of debate as to whether this plant is simply a Bilitae Dark Form, to whether it's an Atabapuensi or to whether it's a hybrid between the two. There is technically no proof of a hybrid at the moment between Philodendra bilitae and Philodendra atabapuensi. I do tend to call this plant a hybrid and I have done recently in some of my you know, recent videos, but I wanted to include all the names that are known for this plant so that you can find it much easier online. So technically what I'm saying is I don't really know what this plant is because it's going by three different terms at the minute and we do not have a confirmed hybrid. So best of luck in your search for that. It's pretty easy to get and that's probably because it is going by different names as well. So if you are looking for something like this, honestly, you shouldn't have too much trouble finding it. And it's still one of my favorites. Next up, we have the Philodendron Atabapuensi. And I think a lot of people can agree that this plant may resemble Aspiritus Sancti when juvenile. It does have really dark leathery foliage. It does have a really good set of ears on it. And it has a really beautiful burgundy underside to the leaf which makes it pretty Instagrammable, to be honest. The juvenile form of Philodendron Atabapuensi can genuinely confuse a lot of people with its confusion between that and a juvenile Spiritus Sancti, so some care needs to be taken there. It does get better though. These plants are pretty easy to find online, both in juvenile form and arguably a little bit older than that as well. So you really shouldn't have too much trouble finding this plant if it is something that you're really looking for. I actually recommend the Atabapuensi pretty highly because it's really striking. Once you see the underside of those leaves, Honestly, they're amazing. Moving on from that, we have the Philodendron Santa Lepoldina. And if we could just pause for one second. So we need a whole section on this and here's why. So when searching for a Spiritus Sancti on the internet, you can sometimes find listings for a Philodendron Santa Lepoldina. And it's strange because if you look at these listings on the internet, often they show a juvenile plant and often different sellers listing the name of this plant will show you different plants. They won't all be the same thing. And you can kind of look at these listings and be like, what's going on? That's not the same plant. Which one's which? Why are people calling Santa Lepoldina Spiritus and the other way around, what is going on? And it can be a bit confusing, but I'm gonna clear that up really quickly because I think it's important. More often than not though, these listings are usually Philodendron Atabapuensi or Philodendron Mexicanum or some other juvenile plant that is bearing the hallmarks of a long-leafed Philodendron. They are not 
Spiritus Sancti. The price tag would probably indicate that anyway, but just to fully clarify, they are not Spiritus Sancti. Some sellers try to pass off the plant they're selling as a hybrid with Philodendron Spiritus Sancti, and often some unknown Philodendron that it's apparently being crossed with. This is either because the seller genuinely doesn't know what the plant is, or sometimes, even worse, of course, the seller is simply trying to make some extra cash by pretending that this plant has a little bit of Spiritus Sancti in it. Some sellers even try to sell it as a type of Spiritus Sancti. Don't worry, I'm keeping my eye on that. So what's going on? What's the tea? The name Santa Lepaldina refers to the town and region where Spiritus Sancti was actually originally discovered. Back in the day, the Spiritus Sancti was actually referred to as the Santa Lepaldina, but at the time, even then, when it was being referred to as this, there was a lot of other plants in the wild, seemingly long-leafed, seemingly ambiguous, that were also referred to as the Philodendron Santa Lepaldina. Right now, though, all you need to know is that the Philodendron Santa Lepaldina is not a registered cultivar. There's actually a lot of debate as to whether the plant even exists at all. Right now, both buyers and sellers are making decent efforts to basically ID the plants that they're either selling or plants that they've purchased via the online community. If you are looking to buy a Spiritus Sancti, I strongly suggest you just bin the name Santa Lepaldina. You shouldn't be seeing on listings at all because anybody that is selling one of these things reputably will not be using this name. If you want to buy a Philodendron Santa Lepaldina, whatever that looks like on the internet, that's absolutely fine for you to do so. I'm not saying don't buy these things, but please just be aware of the fact that it's not you know, necessarily what you think it is. If the seller is marketing it as something else, it isn't. It is simply a long-leaf philodendron, possibly Atabapuensi, possibly Mexicanum, possibly something else, but it is absolutely not a philodendron Spiritus Sancti. That's a little bit of a PSA for everybody, but if you're interested, I have left the link below to a really good web page that I read on this subject. So if you're interested to know kind of more about it and how this whole thing came about, please do click that link below and you will get to read all the information that I read. Last but not least, if you have looked at the plants in this list and you don't find any necessarily worthy, or perhaps you own a lot of them anyway, perhaps nothing really, you know, gets the fire going within you, then you could always just wait for somebody else to make a dupe. Enter Brian Williams, owner of Brian's Botanicals. So Brian, like a lot of us, always wanted a Spiritus, but didn't really want to part with that level of cash. Not only that, but back in the day, they were known as being hard to grow and they grew very, very slowly. So Brian had an idea. He thought to himself, what if I just start breeding plants to create something that would resemble a Spiritus Sancti? So he began to do just that. Over the last few years, Brian has been hybridizing different plants together to create something that would resemble a lot of the hallmarks that we are looking for when we look for a plant close to Spiritus Sancti. Brian is mainly focused on hybridizing different clones of Philodendron Bernardo Patsii together in order to create something that resembles what we're looking for. It's quite interesting actually because throughout this process Brian has been growing the same plant under different conditions and he is finding that different leaves are produced during different conditions. For example, a leaf grown in a hard hardier, drier, hotter climate will actually be longer and more narrow in appearance than, say, that of a leaf that's been grown in a cooler, wetter, darker condition actually appears to be more wide. And this is just on the same plant, so it's actually really interesting. Brian has experimented with, you know, Bernardo Patsii and a few different other types of philodendron together, but he's had the most success so far actually just simply focusing on Bernardo Patsii itself and creating hybrids between different clones of it. The clones of this same plant bred together has produced Brian's best results so far and they look a little bit like this. Not bad. Not bad at all. Nice one, Brian. Brian did tell me yesterday when we talked that he's looking for an actual Spiritus Sancti to use in these, you know, in these breeding trials, but obviously they're pretty hard to come by. So best of luck to you also, Brian, in your quest for a Spiritus Sancti, and please keep up the good work. And that concludes this video. By now you should have a rough idea of some plants that are out there that do bear the hallmarks of a Philodendron Spiritus Sancti. Are they the same? No, of course not. They're plants, but they're as similar as can humanly be found on the internet. Thank you very 
much for watching this video. Please leave your feedback down below. And if there's any plants that you think should have been on this list that I probably should have included but didn't, then please let me know down below. If you like this video, then please leave a like. And if you'd like to see any more of my content, then please feel free to hit that subscribe button. You can always follow me on Instagram as well, at Kaylee Ellen Official. I post, to be honest, quite a lot of things. Sometimes plants, sometimes not. It really just depends on my mood. Thank you very much for watching, guys, and I will see you next time. Bye.